What's going on guys, it's Tom with Tops and Wrestling and in the world of the WWE, we see intergender stuff very rarely. Most recently we saw Becky Lynch be hit with the end of days by Baron Corbin. But today I'm going to talk about some matches, some intergender matches that were pitched by WWE and nearly followed through but ended up not happening and got cancelled for whatever reason. Let's go. But before we do get into the list, be sure to subscribe with post notifications on so you never miss a video. I do lots of intergender videos of, and videos about intergender wrestling. So yeah, subscribe if you're into that. Um, I've got pretty much daily uploads coming soon. So yeah, subscribe and let's get right into this list finally. First of all, we got to talk about Nia Jax. Now I know what you're thinking, you're here to look at the thumbnail. Now the thumbnail is something we'll discuss later because that is a match that could have potentially happened. But first of all, let's talk about two other matches that Nia Jax nearly had. Nia Jax obviously entered the Men's Royal Rumble this year and was the first person since Karma to do so, making her the first person to enter two Rumbles in one night and eliminate people in both the Men's and the Women's Royal Rumble. The most iconic moment from that match with Nia Jax was her getting RKO'd by Randy Orton. In fact, it's probably the most iconic moment of that match in general, of the night in general, probably of the year in general. It's probably my moment of the year, her getting RKO'd by Randy Orton. It was a mad moment. And apparently, WWE even at one point wanted to have Nia Jax in a program with Randy Orton in a little feud between them, which would have been very interesting. I'm not too sure how they would have done it given that Nia's on Raw and Randy Orton's on SmackDown, but I'm sure they would have found a way. The Wrestling Reserve Newsletter mentioned that WWE had plans for Randy Orton vs Nia Jax, and this was teased during the Royal Rumble, but it seems that something changed in Vince McMahon's mind, and it seems to have been Triple H, who has been openly against intergender matches. Here's what that newsletter said. They said Vince McMahon himself was at one point interested in intergender wrestling, and then changed his mind. Paul Avex has been publicly negative on them and hasn't done them in NXT either. So it's very well known that Triple H isn't the most open to intergender matches, so he could have been the influence to stop Vince McMahon from doing these intergender matches that he did have planned for Nia Jax. Speaking of Nia Jax, let's go on to the next one that was planned for her that I think most of us already know about. And that was her teased match with Dean Ambrose. If you remember the night after the Royal Rumble, Nia Jax came out interrupting Dean Ambrose and Dean would take a bump for her and the crowd would chant, let them fight, let them fight, but ultimately no fight would come between them. Very weird moment and nothing would come of it, but something was supposed to come of it. An advertisement came out for a live event in Arkansas showing that Nia Jax and Dean Ambrose were supposed to be facing each other in what was called an intergender special attraction match. But it would not end up happening and the match would be cancelled and never took place at the live event. In an interview with Inside the Ropes, Nia Jax would say the whole reason it didn't happen was because her schedule was all messed up and she was filming Total Divas on the day the match was supposed to happen, but there were conflicting reports to that. John Moxley aka Dean Ambrose on Chris Jericho's podcast, he brought up how he had to take a bump for Nia and how there was a match supposed to be happening. And he said that he was open to the idea of the match, but he very much thought the match was only happening for him to be buried and to damage his character, and not for an intergender special attraction like it was being advertised. And reports came out that the whole reason the match was cancelled was because WWE didn't want Dean Ambrose to be seen as a martyr and to get cheered in response to the fans knowing that he's being buried. It's what happened when he lost to EC3 in two minutes, he started being cheered again, WWE had to turn him face, and that's the reason EC3 has never been pushed, because WWE blames EC3 for Dean Ambrose being cheered for some reason, which is so stupid, and they saw the same thing happening if Nia Jax was to face him, and if Nia Jax was to beat him, like, I'm sure Nia Jax probably would have beat him, like, there's no doubt in that, I know WWE like Nia Jax, and Dean Ambrose was leaving and they didn't really care about damaging his character or whatever. Next up we have a pitch for China. Now we all know who China is, one of the most iconic women's wrestlers of all time and she mixed up in the men's division. She was someone who properly did intergender in that era and she didn't even want to be part of the women's division and she was a two-time intercontinental champion. But at one point she was meant to win the big one, not the intercontinental championship, the WWE championship. There was a pitch for her to face Steve Austin for the WWE Championship at SummerSlam 1999. 
China even at one point became the number one contender for Steve Austin and was going to be facing him at SummerSlam in kayfabe, but then the same night the number one contendership would be revoked and someone else would become the number one contender. China said herself that there was actually a chance of her winning the WWF Championship, but when Playboy came along and wanted her to post for them, she had to make a choice because Vince told her that if she did Playboy, she would never be a world champion and she would choose Playboy and ultimately never become the world champion because she wanted to be wanted to pose for Playboy rather than win the world championship, which is fair enough, it's her choice. Kind of shitty of Vince to make her do that, but it is what it is, I guess. But that's very crazy that China came that close to winning the world championship, like as a female to win the world championship in WWE would be mad and she was a normal contender so even in kayfabe she was very very close and there's never really been a major promotion to have a female world champion in fact Tessa Blanchard she could be winning the impact world championship and that will be the most major occasion of a female world championship win in wrestling which I really hope that does happen because Tessa Blanchard is amazing I'm going off topic my Tessa Blanchard inner fan is coming out but finally, let's address this thumbnail. Let's address how Nia Jax versus Brock Lesnar could have happened at WrestleMania 35 for the Universal Championship. Let's talk about women entering the Men's Royal Rumble. Let's talk about this in kayfabe terms. If a woman was to win the Royal Rumble, who would she have faced? I mean, would she have faced a women's champion or would they have faced a men's champion, a men's world champion, because realistically, especially for someone like Nia Jax, she entered the men's Royal Rumble, meaning she could have faced a men's world champion. Let's look at it this way, when Beth Phoenix entered, if she had won, she could have faced Jericho for the world championship at Mania 26, or Batista for the WWE championship at Mania 26, if that was allowed. But for Nia Jax, since she was in the men's rumble, that definitely means she could have faced a, man, a, a men's world champion since there's a women's world rumble for the women's titles. Nia Jax could have faced Daniel Bryan for the WWE championship, which in itself would be a very interesting match. But in kayfabe terms, she could have also faced Brock Lesnar had she won. Because Brock Lesnar was a universal champion and Nia Jax, if she won, she could have chosen him at WrestleMania. How crazy would that have been? Obviously, I'm very much speaking in kayfabe terms. I doubt there was ever a plan for her to face Brock Lesnar or for her to win the Men's Rumble. But if in kayfabe she was to win it, she could have done that. And I don't know who... If she would have chosen Lesnar, she probably would have chosen Brian and took away Kofi's moment, but my god, how crazy would that have been seeing Nia Jax versus Brock Lesnar? And once again, in kayfabe, she had a fairly good chance of winning the Men's Royal Rumble. She came in at number 30 when everyone was beaten up and damaged. She wasn't too damaged from the Women's Rumble because she was number 29 in that, so she barely took too much damage and she could have won the men's rumble realistically she's one of the bigger people in there other than Braun Strowman and if she didn't get teamed up on by Rey Mysterio, Dolph Ziggler and Randy Orton she could have done more than just eliminate Mustafa Ali and she could have done gone all the way and won like who knows what could have happened to Nia Jax in the men's Royal rumble it's a crazy thing to think about but this genuinely this match genuinely could have happened, speaking again in kayfabe terms, WWE never planned this. There's, I have no doubt that WWE never planned this. But it's just a ludicrous thing to think about. I mean, in 2012, Karma, she could have faced Sheamus for the World Championship, or who was WWE Champion at the time, I'm trying to think. CM Punk, she could have faced CM Punk for the WWE Championship. Imagine Karma versus CM Punk at WrestleMania. Beth, like I said, Chris Jericho or Batista. China entered it twice and she could have faced whoever was the world champion in 1999-2000. I don't remember personally, sorry about that. But yeah, it's all just a bit of a crazy concept that all these matches could have happened in kayfabe. If you're a casual viewer who doesn't know that wrestling is a work and doesn't know wrestling is scripted, you could have genuinely been under the notion and genuinely fear that Nia Jax could have won the Rumble and faced Brock Lesnar. That's something that could have been running through your mind if you don't know that wrestling is a work. Think about that for a second. If I was 9 years old now watching that, I would have thought that. <laughs> That's going to do it for this video guys. If you did enjoy then be sure to smack that like button. Um, really enjoy making videos at the moment. I've been daily uploading for a week now. This is going to be the 8th day. I don't know how long this is going to continue for, but I've got two videos. In fact, 
I might do a double upload today, who knows, but I've got a couple of videos planned to come out and I'm very excited to get them out. So much wrestling this month, man. We have SummerSlam and All Out and maybe I'll do coverage on Impact tomorrow if Tessa Blanchard wins. If Tessa Blanchard wins the normal contender match, maybe I'll talk about it, but either way, it's going to be a great month for wrestling and I'm very excited for All Out and SummerSlam. Let me know which of these matches you would have liked to see happen the most and yeah, subscribe with notifications on. Hit the like button. My Twitter is at Thompson Wrestling. My Instagram is at I'm Tom Bell. Goodbye and keep on rolling.